not a preacher. God didn't call me, and I am not a preacher. I don't profess to be. Neither do I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> However, God did call me for certain things in my life. I was raised in church as a young man, and uh, my mother taken me faithfully. And she did a great job of it. There were certain things in my childhood church that I didn't receive that you guys were getting. We didn't have a Christian school where I came from. I was from a small community in Kentucky. I guess you can tell by the accent. But regardless, try to understand what I'm saying. I know it's a different <coughs> than what you guys have. But uh, anyway, all I can do is give my testimony. And I am a crier, so if you see me crying, it's not there, there's tears of sadness, tears of joy at what God has done in my life. If I had to title what I'm going to try to get across to you guys, it would be choices that you make in your life, how they affect your life. I went seven years in a row to Sunday school and never missed a Sunday when I was a child. Let me read this uh, verse. It's uh, found in Joshua 24 and 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods that your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. I made some bad decisions in my life, you see. I thought I got saved when I was 11 years old. An evangelist from here in Florida used to come, come to our part of the country every year and hold revival. And I saw people getting saved and I wanted that. But evidently I just didn't get what it took. I didn't pray through and hold on to it. That's why it's so very, very important that you make sure that your family's on a solid rock. Your salvation is founded on the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. At the age of 11, I told you I thought I got saved. I was an athlete in high school. Played basketball, baseball, track, cross country. Some of you guys, I'm sure, do the exact same thing. But I was not the most popular guy in school, but I just thought it possibly. Went to the captain of the Trade team. <coughs> a typical upbringing. But after I graduated high school, my mind began to wander. I left what I was raised on, the principles I was raised on. I wandered out in the world. By the age of 21, I was lost. I resorted to all the worldly things. Brought me down even farther. At 24, how many of you have seen my wife sitting in the church? Get them up so I can see who it is. That way I know who I'm telling us to. I met my wife at age 24. We didn't go together too long. We got married. She'd never spent a day in church in her life. I wasn't a good influence on her. She wasn't a good influence on me. But we stayed out in the world. Participated in worldly things. Till I got to the age of 29 years old. Did any of you guys?
guys meet my daughter or see my little redhead daughter last week that was her. She's 45 now. At the age of 18 months, my wife's nephew and his wife came and spent the night with us. And she had had some digestive problems and the doctor had put her on a medication for it called Lomoto. She was an early riser. We stayed up a little late the night before. She got up before we did the next morning. We had told Dottie, his niece's name, we told her, put your purse up. She loved to get in makeup and play. She's 18 months old. So she did, but evidently during the night she had gotten down and taken her medication and left her purse down. The next morning we got up and Tammy is what we call my daughter. Her name is Pamela. And uh, she uh, had gotten in Dolly's purse. We didn't know it. Well, Tammy was a hyper kid. When she was up, she was up. She kept coming and crawling up in Daddy's lap, dozing back off. And I told the wife, I said, something's not right. Got to checking and found some of the pills gone. So I called the hospital. Living in a rural community. They said, you better get her in quick. So it's been about 45 minutes and we rushed her to the hospital. The local hospital, small county. The doctors pumped her stomach twice. She was still just going out. The doctor was sitting reading the book. I walked in, I said, what's going on, doc? He said, I cannot believe two parents would let their child get into medication like this. And I said, Doc, I said, it's not your problem to worry about how this happened. I said, your problem right now is taking care of my daughter. And I said, if you cannot do it, I want her to come somewhere where we can. They immediately got on the phone called Louisville. Took her to Norton Drug Overdose. Overdose. Not that clinic. We got her up there and the doctor came to us and said, I'll be honest with you. He said, I've had children take three of these pills, get them here within 45 minutes and lose them. My daughter had taken somewhere between 15 and 18 pills. She went into a coma. Stayed in a coma from Sunday. This happened on Easter Sunday, by the way. She stayed in this coma until Wednesday morning. My wife and I were sleeping in an old booth. How many of you have been to restaurants where they got the booze, you know, you sit in and everything? That's what we were sleeping in, 86 miles from home. And Wednesday morning, I woke up early and this voice came in my head. I said, son, you better pray. I knew the voice. I've heard you speak to me before. I said, Lord, it's been so long. I don't even know if I even know how to pray. He said, you better try. So I got down beside that old booth and I said, Lord, it's your will to take somebody out of this family. I said, you take this old boy out and he'll mess my life up. I said, that baby's not been playing. Not been playing well. Went on. A little after 12 o'clock that day, my daughter came out of the coma. On Friday, we're taking her home. To this day, no side effects. I told God, I said, I'll make it right. Whenever your spirit is right with me, I will make it right. So just let that little girl live. Went on. June the 1st, my mother attended the church called Small Grove. They had revival. We went every night for two weeks. God would speak to my heart. So they closed the revival out, and I heard that one of my old drinking buddies had been called to preach, and he was opening the revival of a little tiny place called Shrewsbury, Kentucky. 
told his wife when I left to work that morning, I said, be ready tonight, we're going to church. So we went with some friends of ours. Pastor <laughs> opened the service that night, and he says, is anybody here that's lost? Would like for the church to remember in prayer? I wasn't ashamed, I shot my hand and had it. I knew I needed help. And I knew God was the only one help that I had hope of. Thank you, it was preached. I had an altar call to do it. I couldn't feel that bump in my heart like you get. Most of you guys, I'm sure, have been saved. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You feel that heart just go to racing. Feels like you got an elephant sitting on your chest. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get that feeling. He said, we need to have another altar call. He did. I was in the middle of the pew, and to this day, I can't tell you whether I walked the pew, whether people let me out, whether I climbed over the pew in front of me. To this day, I do not know how it happened. But I do know when I hit that altar, God met me there. He gave me a dose of salvation that will never leave me and never forsake me. Before I got up off the altar, old Satan was on top of my heart. He said, here you are, right? Your wife's not. You're going to have a broken home. About that time, an old minister that baptized the same day that my father was, Brother P. Mudd said, Sis, are you lost? And my wife said, Not me all. I didn't even know she'd hit the altar behind me. She got saved that night, too. A little while later, there was an evangelist came to Louisville, Kentucky. 86 miles from home. Holding a revival. So we decided we were going to go. So we started going. That revival went on 17 weeks. Not very many nights of that we missed. 3,000 souls were saved in that revival. But during that revival, some friends that we were going to church with at that time went with us. We'd sing, no one coming. And I looked up at my brother and I said, Rick, when are we going to start singing? I said, God's calling me to go sing. He said, anytime you're ready. So we started a little group called the Sunshine Witnesses. We sang that group for a little over six years. Seen numerous souls saved. Of course, they had the word preached to them. Then we got led to another group called the Happy Echoes out of Tennessee and sang with them about three years. And God led us another direction and we sang with the Comforters Quartet for about three years. Not that we were anything, but God was using us. At one time we had a bus traveling Michigan, Indiana, Indiana, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, and Mississippi. We weren't that great singers, but God was in the midst. Then that group split up. We started going to Little Missionary Baptist Church in Caneyville, Kentucky. 1995, next to our oldest son and his wife, were killed in an auto accident. Mm -hmm. 21 years old. God promised me when I started singing, He said, if you do what I ask you to do, I'll save your family had five kids, we got to see them all saved. God's never slapped on a promise he ever made me in my life. He never will. As long as I keep my priorities in life. We sang the, with that group till we retired. My wife developed problems, polyps on her vocal cords. We retired in 2010. God is good. He's the only thing I've got. 
that I can depend on. I love my wife. I love my family with all that I have in me. But I love my God more. When he called me to sing, small community, everybody there knew my background. Everybody in the whole community. I said, Lord, I can't do this. What are they going to think of me? Up there singing, that's the life that I have lived. He said, who else better can help? I'm nothing special. Just what God made me do. I am what I am by the grace of God, Paul said. Don't claim to be anything other than a saved Christian on my way to heaven. I'm a whole lot closer home than I was at the age of 29 years old when I started this journey. I've been a Christian for some 43 years now. My way is perfect. Don't claim to be perfect. There's only one perfect one ever walked the face of this earth, and that's Jesus Christ. If I can say something to avoid you guys from making the mistakes that I've made in my life, I'll <coughs> work out all this morning what I'm telling you. I hope you don't take it lightly. We make our choices. God don't do bad things to us, but he takes that hedge of protection down from around us when we make bad choices. <laughs> Satan comes in. When Satan comes in, God just kind of gets on the sideline. But we have to live with those choices that we make all the rest of our life. Pastor asked the other day, would you make different choices if you had to live over? Yes, I would. I certainly would. I wouldn't put my family and my mom and daddy through the pain that I put them through. I wouldn't put my wife through the things I put her through. She wouldn't me either. But those choices we have to live with. Paul said, I die daily. It's a repentant way. I find myself asking for forgiveness if anything I may have said or done that day would have hindered anybody. thankful that God led us this way. When we left Kentucky, I lived there all my life. I didn't know why I was coming to this part of the country. I had no idea. We moved in over on 44th Street. You helped and you helped on both of us. You know, boys, don't know how I appreciated that. Brother Kitts, sending you guys our way, just opened up. Yeah, I'll give them that. The love shall fail. You got a very special church, very special pastor, very special youth ministry leader. I have not met the first person here that didn't make me welcome that I don't love to this day. But our neighbor, him and his wife, he was raised a devout Catholic in New York City, or New York State, I'm sorry. But anyway, <coughs> she was a Christian, but she hadn't attended church in I don't know how long. God, God got to using us to witness to her. Finally, she started coming. Sister Renee told her. Some year or two ago, we got to see Brother Ed here today. That's the only reason God moved me to Florida. I'm perfectly happy with that. And I know that's not the end of my journey. As long as I can draw a breath, I aim to do what my God asked me to do. I'm not much of a speaker, but I love to tell what God's done in my life. I've done a 360. Sometimes my spirit gets by, I'm still rotating. Brother Pitts knows what I'm talking about. And that spirit gets on you. But you guys, be careful with the choices you make in your life. Affect you the rest of your life. 
good ones you'll get rewarded for. The bad ones you'll have to reap the bad things along with it. But all in all, I had a great life. I died before I get home. My God's been better to me than I have ever been. And I know He'll take me home. I believe that with all my heart. Appreciate the opportunity <clears throat> to come and speak to you all. Probably hadn't been much, but it's what God laid on my heart to give you. I'd like to close with a few verses taken out of the sixth chapter of Galatians, fifth verse through the tenth. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall reap of the flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Thank you guys for letting me speak to you. Brother Kiss, I appreciate it. I've said anything to help one of you avoid some of the things I've been through in my life. It's all been worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Then he quoted a verse out of Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. If we can learn to choose God daily, Make a big difference in our lives. Amen. Later on. Every person has a verse that says, Every man must bear his own burden. There's many things that you go through, or you go through, or you go through that aren't going to be similar. But that's what God has brought you to in your life. And what does it come down to? Do you trust God? Do you believe in Him? Do you place your faith in Him? Do you keep on going? Keep on trying? Do you continue to serve Him anyway? Very important thing to think about. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm going to ask you a few questions this morning. We heard Brother Strasburger's testimony this morning. and He had mentioned how he got saved at a young age. You have the opportunity to do the same thing with your life. If you've never been saved before, you can get saved today. You can know for certain that heaven will be your home. You don't have to leave here guessing or thinking, maybe I am. You can know. Somebody here this morning that be willing to be honest with themselves and honest with God and say, Brother Pitts, I don't know for certain if I were to die right now, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. Is there anybody at all? Just put your hand up, please. Anybody at all? I don't know for sure. If my life were to end right now, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. Is there anybody at all? No one's looking. All right. If we we're all being honest this morning, every person in this room is saved. And if that's the truth, I, I praise the Lord for it. Good thing. There's been a time and a place where you've accepted Christ as your Savior. That's a wonderful thing. But what next? What have you done since that time? Since that decision that you've made? To choose Jesus over the devil. To choose heaven over hell. To choose righteousness over sinfulness. What have you done since then? What has God done with you? 
Next thing might be this, Brother Terry, fine, I'm saved, but I want to live my life for God. I want to give my life to Him daily. And then every decision that I have to make, I want to choose what will please Him. Brother Pitts, that's me. Would you raise your hand? Anybody at all? Several hands going up. Well, a lot of hands going up. All right, let me put them down. If you raised your hand just a moment ago for any of those things, I want you to come forward and do business with the Lord. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. We don't have any music this morning. We're used to this. We know how it works. If God spoke to your heart, you respond. If you raise your hand just a moment ago, respond to what God has done in your heart. <coughs> I want to serve God faithfully. I want to do it on a daily basis. I want to do what's right. If you raise your hand, I challenge you, come forward and you talk to God about it. Say, Lord, I need your help. I need your guidance. I want to choose you today. I don't want to choose myself. I don't want to choose my flesh. I want to choose you. I want to reap the harvest for doing what's right. That's a good harvest to reap. Every other head bowed, eyes closed, with tired sleep, everyone else. No one looking around. I'm going to pray here in just a moment. We may be done. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for speaking to our hearts this morning. Thank you for speaking to my heart through this testimony that we heard. Lord, we have a good group of young people in this school. Lord, I believe deep down inside they have a desire to want to serve you. They want to please you. They want to honor you with their lives. Lord, for a second, I don't believe that there's anyone in this room that does not agree with that. And Lord, if they do think that in their heart, if they, if they don't, I pray you do with them what you will. Lord, I believe that every person in this room has a desire to please you. And Lord, if that's the case, I pray that you would break up our hearts. Break us spiritually speaking, Lord. Where you bring us to a place where we have nowhere to look but up. To look at you for all the answers. I pray, Lord, that you be with those that have responded to you speaking to their heart this morning. Lord, that you help them to do what is right. Help them, Lord, on a daily basis to choose you, to choose righteousness over sinfulness, to choose you over the devil and what he has for us. Lord, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. We thank you for the salvation that we have through him, so freely given. Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for the blessings that you give us on a daily basis. Lord, as Brother Strasburger quoted this morning, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Help us, Lord, to return the favor. Help us to live our life for you. And just as that verse says, Lord, may we choose this day that we're going to serve you. May we choose tomorrow that we're going to serve you. Lord, 50 years from now, may we choose that we're going to serve you. And I pray, Lord, that the day will come where we can turn around and look and say, Lord, I'm glad I made that choice. I'm glad I chose you early in life. Lord, I pray you help us to do that. So help us to realize, Lord, it's a daily thing. We can't choose you on Sunday and live however we like every other day of the week. It won't work. We'll only get farther away. The day will come if we do that, Lord, that we'll stop choosing you on Sunday. We'll stop choosing you altogether. Help us, Lord, to choose you daily, to do what's right, to do what you've called us to do. We thank you, Lord, for all you do for us, and we continue to work in our homes, in our lives, and in our school, our youth department, and our church. And we continue to work on us. We thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Be sure to thank Brother Strasburger for coming and taking time out of his busy schedule, I'm sure, uh, to come and be with us today. You may be seated. got a few announcements for you this morning that I did not go over earlier. I want to remind you of a few things going on, but be sure to thank him and uh, tell him thank you. If you see him at church, be sure to go by and say hello to him and his wife. Of course, his son and his wife come here as well, Andy and his wife and their daughter. Uh, be sure to get to know them if you haven't already. And uh, good people and 
It's a joy to have them here at Riverland with us and uh, joining us. And, uh, be sure to get to know, know them and uh, it'll be good for you. A couple of announcements for you. Um, like I said a moment ago, uh, there's a volleyball game tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll be traveling to Valdosta, Georgia for a away volleyball game against Victory. And I uh, hope the girls do well, play well, play hard, and uh, focus on that and uh, do your best. And that's all you can do. Friday, oh, let me back up a little bit. We have uh, proteins and characters for Christ tonight. Don't forget about that. Six o'clock, don't miss it. And uh, we'll look forward to it. Teenagers, we will be going out, so bring a few dollars with you. And because uh, we'll make a quick stop somewhere and uh, we'll go out and hand out some tracks or Bibles or something. Uh, along those lines, but we'll do that tonight at 6 o'clock, so don't miss it. Uh, please be here. Please be on time so we can leave on time. And uh, Characters for Christ, that's for everybody uh, under 7th grade, 6th grade and lower. Uh, make sure Characters for Christ tonight. They started up last week and had a good time, and uh, don't miss it tonight, and uh, you'll enjoy that. Um, also, this Friday, I have not got the sign-up sheet up yet, but I will have it up this afternoon, I promise. There's a youth rally this Friday night at Bible Baptist in Deland. Uh, that starts at 7 o'clock, but we will be leaving at 4.45. What time are we leaving on Friday? 4.45. What time are we leaving? 4.45. 4.45. So please be here, be on time, bring a few dollars mm -hmm. with you on Friday as well. We look forward to this youth rally. It's a good one. Brother David Brown, he's preaching chapel here earlier this year. Uh, and every year, actually, he preaches for us. Uh, he'll be hosting that youth rally. He does a good job at Bible Baptist Church of the Land. That'll be this Friday night. We're leaving at 4.45. Don't miss it. Bring a few dollars with you. And uh, again, that's the one where they do Chick-fil-A afterwards, so it's hard to beat that part. Uh, but that'll be this Friday night. We'll be getting back late. It is about an hour and 40 minute drive uh, over to their church. But again, it's a good rally, and we look forward to it. We will be getting back late. Also, today is the last day to sell your barbecue tickets, so hopefully... Uh, you got a lot of those taken care of. You need to bring them to me tonight. If you're already done, you can give them to me now. Uh, but, you know, it's cutting a little early, but you can still bring in. Be sure that you do bring in uh, your barbecue meal tickets tonight. I need them by tonight. Uh, bring them to proteins. Bring them to church. Give them to either me or my wife. Uh, and if you have any money that's already been turned in, turn that in with it. So that way it doesn't get lost. And uh, we'll have the barbecue meals to be picked up this Sunday night after the church service. Uh, we're going to instruct our church people. They can get in the car. They can go to the drive around and they can pull up to the gym door and get their meals and take it with them to go. Uh, we'll also have one of the buildings open in case anybody wants to stay and eat. That's an available option as well. So don't miss out on all that. If you haven't bought any for yourself yet or your, your parents or anything like that, make sure you get some. Again, today is the cutoff date for tickets, so make sure you get that done by tonight and bring in everything you need to turn in. And we'll have a pickup for that Sunday night. And then next week, we've got a couple of volleyball games. The game on Tuesday, uh, there is an away game uh, at Jacksonville. I'm assuming that's probably West Meadows or somebody. Uh, who is it? Millennium. So that'll be on Tuesday. And then Thursday, next Thursday, will be a home game at 4.30. And that's actually senior night. Uh, and that game starts at 4.30. So uh, look forward to that. Uh, stay tuned for other details on that uh, senior night next Thursday uh, at MTI. And I uh, look forward to that. All right. Any questions about anything? Teachers, any announcements that maybe I forgot? All right. I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and pray. Let's stand up. We'll pray and we'll dismiss in a word of prayer. And uh, again, be sure to thank Brother Strasberger for coming and speaking to us today. And uh, be sure to tell him thank you for that. And uh, we look forward to um, hopefully having him again one day soon. And I'll be good. All right. Let's pray and we'll dismiss. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all you do for us. Thank you again for speaking to hearts. Help us, Lord, to go about our day choosing you. And, uh, and may we choose you every day. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Be a church tonight. Allow it to go well. Proteins, the Bible project as that begins and, and continues, Lord. Uh, allow it to continue to go well as we reach local homes with New Testaments to give to them. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us the means and finances available to be able to purchase those and give them out freely. Lord, it's, it sure is a blessing to be able to do that. And uh, Lord, help us take advantage of it. Help us to be where we need to be tonight, characters for Christ and proteins, and most of all, most importantly, church to follow. And uh, Lord, help us to uh, be at the youth rally this Friday. We look forward to it. May you speak to our hearts, give us what we need most. And uh, we thank you for all you do for us. May you bless us and help us to do what is right. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>